part two in a video series of me trying to resurrect an old farm irrigation system. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, I would encourage you to watch that first. However, just a quick recap from part one. The pipe on the right is the well, which is temporarily covered. The pipe on the left it leads down to what I'm assuming is to the rest of the irrigation system, which feeds areas like this here and this as well, and also this and others. Before going out and buying a pump and hooking it up to the well and messing with all that, I just decided to run a hose from the house, pump it down into the system. That way I can figure out if it works or where it goes and how it works. However, results were less than optimal. At first, we did get water flowing from one of the remote stations out here, the spigot, but then that soon stopped. And even though we continued putting water down in, it wasn't coming up anywhere. So we figured we're going to end up needing a much more high volume of water to go in to expose the problem areas. So I got a pump. Capacity is about 4,000 gallons an hour. Hooking that thing up and getting it running, though, had its own whole host of problems. And a couple of things I discovered... These wires running out of the conduit here, I knew they were for a pump, I just really wasn't sure what the hookup was, but it turns out that that's a 220 line, so I set the pump to 220 volts, and the power will be switched on and off via this pressure switch next to the pressure tank, that is whenever it is I'm able to build pressure. This is just a temporary mock-up just to see if I can get the system running. I built a small stand to mount the pump to, eventually that'll be sturdier and I'll build a dog house around it and then a couple of places I've got rubber couplers which will ultimately be replaced with something more permanent. A couple of the problems I had on top of this pump here is the priming port or the yeah priming pull the plug out pour water in to prime the pump. I had to reprime the pump several times and pulling that plug all the way out and then uh, filling it up through that little hole was very time consuming. So I added this T-section with a ball valve on it. Now if I have to reprime, I just open the valve, fill it with the garden hose real quick, close the valve, and ready to go. So my quick priming system turns out to work pretty well. However, the pump still loses prime. It'll run for, I don't know, 10, maybe 20 minutes. And then it, uh, you start to hear it cavitate, and then all of a sudden, pff, nothing. So I can't even get out to diagnose the system or anything because I can't keep this pump pumping water long enough to even get to that point. I don't know why the pump is losing prime. It could be a multitude of things and I really don't care actually. I don't feel like trying to figure out the priming issue right now. I just want to keep the thing running so I can figure out what's going on with everything downline of that. So my solution to that was, first of all, get a fresh beer and then on that T section that I built for priming it, put a hose fitting on there and that way I can run the hose from the house into that port. It'll keep a trickle of water going constantly on the uh, suction side. Hopefully that'll keep the pump from losing prime. Obviously not a permanent solution, just rather a band-aid, but I want to try to figure out the rest of the system. I'll come back to the priming issue later. And in like the first video, I again have my buddy Bob out here. He's going to do some cameratography. Plus, it always helps to have somebody around to laugh at you whenever you make a mistake. Yeah, probably good idea. Put electrical connections down here. Mm-hmm. It's only 220 volts. 110 a piece. Uh -huh. Well, when we're standing in... <laughs> I'm going to get out of here for a moment. <laughs> Before you hit the breaker. Right, just a little bit of... All right, we're filming. Wait, is film the right word for digital? Digital? Oh, well, I know people still say tape. Tape. We're rolling. Here we go. Engage Mr. Crusher. It sounds like it's pumping water. I forgot what it sounds like. Yeah, it does. There's going to be water pouring out over there at the faucet. we got to shut the faucet off. I left that faucet oh, open. Let's go close. Let's go. We're going to go out. 
this is going to be fine, right? Okay. Just pop the fitting, so... That wasn't on very tight. Must be building pressure, though. And again, this pump setup with the plumbing is temporary, which is why I've got these rubber couplers in here, because I know I'm going to rearrange that later when I move the pump closer to the barn, but... I was always skeptical of using the rubber couplers because they're not really rated for pressure. So I'm trying to crank them down as much as I can with the wrench without stripping them out. However, I only got to about 9 PSI on the last one before it blew a coupler off. And so I may have to put double bands on that to get it to hold. And then even when I do that, hopefully the rubber of a coupler itself doesn't rupture. This took a long time. This was like an entire day of trial and error, basically, of uh, you know, rebuilding sections of PVC and trying to keep the pump primed and blowing fittings off and so forth. But finally did get it to run continuously. It was running for about an hour when we found this. This is progress, but still it's a, it's a big area that's swampy now and so still doesn't tell us exactly where the break is. After a closer inspection of the marshy area, I may have possibly zeroed in on where the break is. Difficult to say until right I start digging. That's right there. Let's go get the shovels. Shovels. Sounds like a... It's like a boot stuck in wet mud. <laughs> Every time you pull out, it's like, geez, you guys got a, you got a seal on it. Oh, God. Ugh. I bet it's buried like three foot deep below the frost line. No, it's not. That's well, where it was bubbling. Is, is all the goddamn water. <laughs> well, we only pumped like 5,000 gallons of water before we found the leak. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, this is going to be tough because I can't see. Wait, what can't you see? I can't see the, through the muddy water to see if the, where the line is. Oh. If I'm hitting the pipe or not. Well, you should bring your tractor out here and dig a, a drainage line or something to drain the water, the swamp away. Okay. Which and where, how do I, where, which way? Like if you took your bucket and like yeah. dug like a deeper hole somewhere, the water would drain out of here. Right, fine. Here. I'll be back. Want me to drive you? <laughs> if you weren't able to follow the live conversation in the previous clips, the issue I was having was uh, digging a hole and it just kept filling up with water and I couldn't see, you know, bottom of the hole or where I was digging. So my buddy Bob had an idea. We're not going to call it a good idea. We'll just call it an idea to start. But uh, suggested I get the tractor and start digging uh, a trench or a hole next to where I'm digging and hopefully the water will all drain into there out of the hole I'm digging, maybe I can see what I'm doing. And sometime between him making that suggestion and me actually starting to dig with the tractor, it got dark. And uh, I'm editing this like two weeks after filming it, so I don't remember what happened. But my guess is that we decided to go into the barn, sit down, take a break for a while. We've been at this all day. And by the time we got back out here, we lost our daylight. And as it turned out, uh, just taking a, a couple of scoops here and there, uh, wasn't going to do it. That was immediately filled up. We pumped so much water out into this, out into the field here. So I just kept kind of moving down the line and taking more dirt, making this trench longer to immediately fill up. And still there's water in the hole that I'm trying to dig and I still can't see the bottom of it. So when that was all said and done, I apparently inadvertently created like an entire spillway or I don't know what you call it, a irrigation canal or something like that. But I did get all the water that was in the hole I was digging to drain. However, even then, I still couldn't see what I was doing. So we figured we'll, uh, we'll just turn the pump on one more time. We'll see if uh, what we did there exposed anything so that we can have a better idea where this break in the line is. So we ran the pump. <clears throat> that didn't help at all. Uh, all you could just see is a bunch of glistening. You coun't see any source of water. Just It was just everywhere. So... Bob and I were way behind on our beer drinking anyway, so we're going to call it a night. However, it was a good day of progress. Did get the pump hooked up. Did get it to finally stay running and primed. And 
we did get the general idea of where the break in the system is. So even though progress has been made, this has now taken like five times as long as I thought it would and probably two or three times the number of trips to Home Depot than I thought it would. Therefore, the status has officially been elevated from small job to project. So keep an eye out for part three where I hope to be able to finish the project.